My goal today is to make some modular terrain out of these using this. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. In a previous episode, I had briefly mentioned an old video that I had seen a few years ago where a guy took plastic bags and made some modular cave terrain out of them. I looked extensively for that video so that I could link to it. It has disappeared off of YouTube. I actually even remembered that I had it saved in my Watch Later playlist, and I could see right there, deleted video. So it is gone. I can't reference it, but it's such a cool idea that I wanted to try it myself. And since the video is gone, well, I might as well do one. Sorry, I can't credit the original because I don't remember who made it. And like I said, it's deleted. Just about everybody has a stockpile of these in their house, under the sink, in the basement, stairwell, whatever. And we all know that they are not great for the environment. And it would be really nice to do something useful with them. You can only pack so many lunches and scoop so much kitty litter with them. I'm going to try to make stalagmites. I'm hoping that a heat gun and a bit of sculpting can turn these into something usable and neat looking. But I've never done this, so this experiment may succeed, it may fail. Either way, we're going to find out together. Well, the idea here is pretty simple. Take some plastic bags and melt them. I, I really don't know the best way to start, but I have a feeling just taking some and getting it into a mass is probably a decent starting point and then hitting it with the heat gun. I'm gonna start with the heat gun on low. Um, let's try high. Now I don't, I don't wanna burn this. I just want it to shrink. Take a break here and see if I can squish it. Whew, that is hot. You might want some heat resistant gloves for this. It's very hot. So far, it is still very puffy and not very dense. Let's try adding some more heat. really doesn't seem to be getting much smaller. I noticed a very small little bit of smoke on it, which is something I definitely don't want to see. I don't want to be burning this stuff and breathing that in. Even with the heat, some ventilation is probably a very good idea. But this is too hot to touch. Some baking paper here and see if I can squish it with this. I've got it into a somewhat dense pile but it doesn't really look much like a stalagmite like I'm going for. It kind of looks like a pile of, of white poop. We're not quite there yet, that's for sure. And this much heat on my cutting mat is not great either, causing a bubble in the cutting mat. So I think I should put something down here. I don't really have an appropriate heat mat, so I'm just gonna use this cutting board and hopefully that works out. I need to build this up taller, so we're gonna see we can add another bag. Oh, that is way too hot. I'm kind of trying to roll this up to make it long and narrow within this parchment paper. If I could just easily mold this with my hands, I, I think it would actually work great, but this is, I really underestimated how hot this would become. And I don't have 
any kind of heat protecting gloves. I have oven mitts, but that's not really gonna work. I'm, I'm sure appropriate gloves do exist. And if you have something like that, it would probably work perfectly. Now we have to join these two pieces together. I don't know if you can just melt them. I was kind of able to bond them together by melting them, but obviously this piece looks pretty ridiculous uh, and I need to fill it in on the sides. And I'm gonna see if maybe I can just wrap some plastic around it and create a skin all the way around this whole thing. It's a little bit tricky because I want to hold this bag in place while melting it, but I don't want to burn my fingers off with the heat gun. I'm just going to take a little sewing pin and pin it in place and see if that holds it enough while this melts. Like I said, this is the first time and we're trying this together. There is no prototype here. This is the prototype. Definitely hits a point where it stops getting smaller. Let's see if we can roll this. Oh, the heat is even distorting this cutting board a lot. You can really tell the amount of heat I've been using by the fact that this cutting board is just bending. It is starting to look like something here and it has a surprising amount of weight to it. I thought I'd need to put something inside to add some weight. A couple bags condensed this much is pretty heavy. I think I wanna add one more though. Again, I'll pin it. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. This is gonna be a little bit silly, but I need to try. Yeah. It's pretty much at a point where I could throw some paint on it, but I do wanna address the issue of it not sitting very nicely. It's not too bad. It's actually pretty well balanced and not too wobbly, and it has a nice weight, but I think it could be improved. I'm gonna use a simple washer to make it a little bit more bottom heavy and hopefully flatten out the base and also a little bit of hot glue is gonna help me with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do, put a bunch of hot glue on this washer and I have this set to high temperature so that that hot glue is very hot and hopefully melts the plastic a little bit to embed this washer deep within rather than just sitting on the surface. I don't know if that will actually happen, probably not as much as I would have liked, but that's okay. Now what I wanna do is just add a whole bunch more hot glue on the bottom here and flatten it out to make a nice flat base. So I need a fresh piece of parchment and then I can just coat this whole thing in hot glue. Need more hot glue. Coat it real good, heavy amount, and just press it flat. The excessive hot glue that squeezed out the sides looks a lot smoother and rounder than the plastic bag texture. So I'm just gonna kind of blend it together using the tip of the hot glue gun. I may have used too much hot glue on this first attempt and it might be beneficial to be a little bit more careful and use a little bit less so you don't get this problem. But I think it'll be fine once I blend it together. I'm just smoothing out any of these like fine little jagged edges that the hot glue made. Again, using the tip of the hot glue gun. I'm really impressed with, with the heft this thing has. I think I'm pretty satisfied with the texture and the lines here. It looks pretty good. There is some spots where there's like a weird uh, dot pattern. And I think that actually came from my cutting board. Unfortunately, this has a bit of a pattern to it and that transferred onto this, which doesn't look very good. So I would avoid using something with texture to roll it on like I did. But the spots where that didn't appear, like here, look really cool. And I think the paint job on this is gonna be 
pretty simple. I'm just gonna jump over, spray paint this with some white primer, let it dry, and then I think just do a sepia wash and see how it looks. So I hit this with spray primer and I actually decided to first prime it gray and then hit it from the top with a white and do a little bit of a zenithal highlight. Of course, from after priming, you could just paint this up however you'd like with your regular craft paint. I don't think you could paint it unprimed with craft paint. You may be able to Mod Podge it and go from there, but I think with the plastic bags, spray primer is gonna be the best approach. I'm gonna try the Vejo uh, Game Wash Dip See how this looks. This wash is really strong and really sticky and I don't really like it in some situations, but it might be okay here. I have a feeling it'll be too much. That looks like poo. <laughs> okay, let's try spreading it out and see how it, how it goes. This is definitely the most poopy looking thing I've ever made on this channel. And I mean that in a literal sense. A black wash would have looked good as well. I'm just gonna try to get off as much of this excess as possible here. Dipping it was probably a bit much. I have a feeling this technique would work for other kind of things, not just stalagmites, but you know, like a spider's kind of nest or some kind of monster egg or thing where it's wrapped up some kind of victims or some kind of alien terrain just depending on how you shape it and paint it. And just let that dry for a little bit and see how it looks finished. Well, I think I can consider this experiment a success. I was able to take the plastic bags and turn them into a pretty convincing stalagmite piece of scatter terrain. I mean, it worked and it has a really unique look to it that other methods don't. I really like the lines and the patterns that it created. I personally found it kind of difficult to actually do because of the hot hands issue, but I think if you got some kind of heat glove or an UV glove, something like that, it would be much easier. I took a look on Amazon while this was drying and there's all sorts of little gloves available that should allow you to grab this thing and sculpt it with your hands. I'll put a link to those searches in the video description if you wanna check out what I'm talking about and grab something like that for yourself. I think the biggest advantage to this method, however, is that it utilizes a material that's universal. Unfortunately, plastic bags literally cover the earth. They're everywhere. They're, they're a serious problem and no matter where you are, you can probably get your hands on one of them the only other thing you really need is a heat gun. So that might be the biggest restriction. You may be wondering, will a hairdryer work? I don't know. I didn't try a hairdryer. I tried a heat gun because it's more powerful. If you're wondering, grab a hairdryer, try it out for yourself. I do expect that it probably won't work too well unless you have a hairdryer that gets really, really hot. I did find it required a lot of heat to get the bags past the point of their initial shrinking and into that really, hard final condensed state. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did hit the like button, let me know in the comments section below. And I hope you found it useful and learned something from it and maybe it will help you out. If you wanna pick up any tools or supplies for yourself, something like a heat gun to tackle a project like this, I have my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca where I list and explain all of the stuff that I use regularly in my hobby. So you can make sure you're getting the right things for the job. And of course, if you enjoy these videos that I make each and every week, and you wanna help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. It's through that support that I'm able to dedicate all my time and effort into making these videos. And I would love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Get yourself in that Facebook group, Discord server, and all that other fun stuff. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you again next week. This really looks like poop, though. <laughs>